everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to talk about my August wrap up. I read 25 books in the month of August. I had 10 ebooks, 3 physical books and 13 audiobooks. I had 2 2 stars, 8 3 stars, 13 4 stars and 2 5 stars. So it was a pretty balanced month. Sounds like to me, I mean, pretty balanced. <laughs> and I think the two bad ones kind of goes with the two good ones, so it was kind of a balanced thing. And so I'm just going to go through these really quick and tell you what uh, the book was and what the rating was. And if you want to know more information about them, you can look at my weekly wrap-ups. And that would let you know a little bit more about each book. So I have The Mailman by Bentley Little, and I gave it three stars. Muffin to Fear by Victoria Hamilton, and that was number five in the Mary Muffin series, and I gave it four stars. Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manasala. This was the first book in the uh, Tita Rosie's Kitchen series. I gave it three stars. The Second Chance Pass, number, which was uh, number five in the Virgin River series, I gave it four stars. I have Magic Most Wanted by Tyler Whitesides. I gave it four stars. Railroaded for Murder by J.C. Eaton. I gave it four five stars. Cat Got Your Secret by Julia Chase, Julie Chase. I gave, and it's number three in the Kitty Couture series, and I gave it four stars. Good Witch Hunting by Dakota Cassidy was uh, Witches, Witchless in Seattle number seven. I gave it four stars. Fate of the Fallen by Ellery Adams, which was Hope Street Church number five. I gave it four stars. Murder in the Cookbook Nook by Ellery Adams, and it was number seven in the uh, Book Retreat series. I gave it four stars. I have Death at the Crystal Palace by Jennifer Ashley. This was number five in the Cat Holloway series, and I gave it five stars. I have Muffin But Trouble by Victoria Hamilton, which was uh, Mary Muffin number six, and I gave it three stars. Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, and I gave it two stars, probably my most disappointing read. Then I have Hummus and Homicide, which was number one in the Kebab Kitchen series by Tina Cashian. I gave it four stars. Long Island Iced Tina by Maria Del Rico, and it was number two in the Catering Hall series. I gave it three stars. And Pin Pal by Dathan Arbach, which I gave two stars. Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss, I gave four stars. The Cranky Chicken by Catherine Battersby, I gave four stars. Super cute little book. I have Dune by Frank Herbert, I gave it three stars. Murder in the Irish Village by uh, Caroline... I think it's Carlene or Caroline O'Connor. I can't remember which now. And I gave it four stars, and then I had Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village by Ma Maureen Johnson and illustrated by Jay Cooper. I gave it four stars. That is a mouthful. Then I have The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher, and I gave it four stars. Matchmaking Can Be Murder by Amanda Flowers, and I gave it four stars. Dover Demon by Hunter Shea, and I gave this three stars, and it's one of the two that hasn't been reviewed on my channel yet, so I'll go ahead and say that um, Hunter Shea is one of my favorites, and um, I thought this one was going to go different than it did. He, he took a, the Dover Demon and went way different than I was thinking. I thought it was going to be like one of his romp and chomp type uh, books where it's just a bunch of uh, a creature going out there and just uh, kind of creating all kinds of mayhem. And this wasn't exactly that. He, he went a, a different way with it. it. It was okay, but it was a little slow up until like the second half. And so, yeah, so not extremely disappointing, but just not really what I was wanting. So three stars. And then I have Which Way Did He Go by Dakota Cassidy, and this is the other one that I haven't talked about yet, and this one I gave three stars to as well. 
it's probably my least favorite in the Witchless in Seattle series, and this was number eight, I believe. And uh, yeah, this one was just really different because it was about Stevie trying to find um, uh, Wynn, who is their international spy guy ghost, and uh, he disappears at the beginning, and she thinks it's because they kind of had a fight because she is uh, she's a witch. But she got her witchy powers slapped out of her in the first book, which is really why you have to start this book, this series at the beginning to really understand what's going on. But she does have a few abilities, and one of them is that she can hear ghosts, but she can't see them. And so she's been hearing this uh, British spy that has been murdered since book one, and he helps her solve. And she's also gained another witch, another spy, which is a Russian spy and a slew of animals. She's got her belfry, her bat, familiar, and then she's got um, Whiskey, who is a dog, and a turkey, which I can't remember the turkey's name. And yeah, it's just, it's crazy. And they're just like super fun, but this one just, it just didn't hit the mark. It was just not my favorite, which is why I gave it three stars. So that's everything that I read in August. And so I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!